Speed. <laughs> Speed. Uh, action. Rolling. Camera. Are you rolling? Yeah, we're doing a, a video shoot for I Almost Told You That I Love You. We're in a, this old, broken down, beat down mental institution, and this place is creepy as hell. It sure felt good making the video. It sure was a good time, and uh, there's lots of pleasurable eye candy. And, uh, well, let's just face it, we look good in the video. <laughs> we wanted to make a video that was totally away from the subject matter of the song, but then we got this treatment from this fellow named Colin and we read it and it was just like, what are we, we're not, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like, this is a sexy, dirty, nasty song. Let's make that type of video. And uh, we wanted to create different rooms and different vibes and elements. And we got, in one room, there's this fetish for furries where there's like, Two, there's a beaver and a bluebird fucking. In the next room, there's a, a suspension, which actually comes from the inspiration of the song. A good friend of mine, Matt Zane, uh, who also does suspensions, shoots porn. And we were having a conversation, and he was telling me he has sex with his women before he puts them on camera. And he was like, I was banging this girl, and the pussy was so good, Jacoby. I almost told her that I loved her. Me and my producer looked at each other, we're like, that's a fucking rock and roll song right there. And so that's why we had to have the guy on suspension in to pay homage to Matt Zane. Getting the suspension guy set up was interesting. When you picture a dude in suspension, you picture rings through his back and being hung and suspended versus just stabbing fish hooks through his back. I turned around at one point and then I turned back and saw him. His assistant was fucking ripping these things and like you could just see blood pooing out and I was like, oh. I looked back at a couple of the crew members and they were almost gagging. So it, it was a good start to the day for sure. My wife played a dominatrix which slapped my bare ass with a cat of nine tails which didn't hurt as bad as I thought it was gonna hurt. This is the first time I've exposed my, no it'll be the second time I've exposed my ass to the world. When my kids see this, they're gonna think mom looks hot. My knees actually hurt worse than my ass. <laughs> Hurt. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I had a blindfold on and was getting slapped in the face, but I heard the whipping and I was really jealous. <laughs> so some kinky odd stuff, chicks with their tops off, chicks making out. I didn't see any guys making out. I pretty much been making out with this pretty hot chick. Then they turned the video camera on and decided that they should tape it. Look for the R-rated version, the uncensored. That's where all the good stuff comes out. What'd you say it looked like an ass out of a raccoon? I was about to get beat by a couple of women down in the dungeon. Do you have nipple covers in that Oh! Oh! Double fucking oh. That's dirty. Look at that shoe. Running shoes and fucking stockings. The video turned out great. I'm really happy with it. Jacoby looks awesome. The band looks awesome and there's some really shocking shit in it, so I think the Papa Roach fans will be happy with it. Oh, Colin was great. I remember when we were thinking about video treatments and we got his and we just, we read it, it really kind of ch changed all of our minds. We were like, all right, cool, let's not make a video that like has a political message or like this social conscious thing. Let's just make this sleazy, nasty, out there video. That's really when we we're like, all right, this is the guy. And to watch him when he's in the zone, when he's like watching playback, that motherfucker, he's not fucking around. Like, he's serious about what he does. And to me, when I see somebody in their craft, in their element, just killing it, I totally respect it and I love it. And Insider Productions, everybody's been great, top to bottom all day. I mean, we've worked with Brian Adler a few times and he's great. Everybody's been cool, you know, from, you know, people winding up cables, putting up lights, doing the sound, you know, it's, it's been really cool, and all the extras, too. For us, it's like our first sexually charged rock and roll song that we've written. Like, everything else is very personal and introspective or about the world around us, and this record, don't get me wrong, there's songs of clarity and sanity, but this song is the polar opposite. It's about complete insanity. And I think that this song really helps the record as far as the entertainment value goes. And it also humanizes the record and sh shows that we're not, we don't take ourselves too seriously. You know, it's a little bit sleazy and it's a little bit raw and ruckus, but we found that 
our fans have really gravitated to this song. I think everybody can relate to having sexual energy or sexual tension in their lives. It'll polarize people. Either they're gonna love it or they're gonna fucking hate it, but that's what we want. We don't want anybody in the middle. Love us or hate us. Love me or leave me alone. That's the deal. And yeah. I almost told you that I love you, we'll do that. I'm not the one that you want, not the one that you need. My love is like a fucking... It's a wrap!